Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and this video is the first tutorial for the trigonometry topic. Now what we're going to look at in this tutorial is how we convert between different angular measurements. Now the main ones that we think of are revolutions, degrees and radians. So we have revolutions, we have degrees and we have radians. First of all, revolutions are complete terms. So if we start at the top of this circle and we rotate the full way round until we return back to the top of the circle, then that represents one revolution or one full turn. So everyone should be familiar with revolutions or full turns. We've also seen degrees before. Now in a revolution, we know that we have 360 degrees. So every time we go round one full revolution, we've traveled through 360 degrees. We'll just write some of our key facts up here. One revolution, or one rev, is 360 degrees. But today we're gonna to introduce a new angular measurement, and that angular measurement is the radian. Now to begin with, one full revolution is two pi radians. So one rev is two pi radians. And if you do two pi on your calculator, then that is 6.283 to three decimal places. So one revolution is 6.283 radians. Now that may seem a little bit obscure, but if we have a look at what a radian actually is, if we take a look at our circle here, we know that the radius of our circle is r. Well, if we have an angle of one radian, then that's going to represent an arc length also equal to r. This angle in here, theta, is one radian. If we were to repeat that and go through another radius, we would have two radians. A third radius, we would have three radians, four, five, six, point two eight radians. Now, although you may not have seen the radian before, the radian is actually the standard international unit for an angle. We typically learn about degrees very early on at school, but in engineering we more typically use radians as our angular measure. Now in this tutorial I want to show you how you convert between degrees and radians, radians back to degrees, revolutions to radians and so on. Now the important fact to remember is what we have up here. One revolution is 360 degrees and one revolution is 2 pi radians. See, if we have any angle given to us in degrees, let's take, for example, 72 degrees, and we want to get that into radians, then the simplest way to do that is first to find out how many revolutions it is, and then to convert it to radians, like a two-step process, if you like. So in order to find out how many revolutions we have, we need to divide by 360. Well, 72 divided by 360 is 0.2. So that's 0 0.2 revolutions. And then to get it into radians, well, we know there's 2 pi radians in every revolution. So we're just going to times that value by 2 pi, which is 1.26 radians to two decimal places. If we look at this a slightly different way, let's take another angle. This time we'll take 135 degrees. We can actually combine those two conversion factors. So what we would actually be doing is we'd be timesing by 2 pi over 360, which is the same as dividing by 360 and times in by 2 pi. And that would again give us our angle in radians, this time 2.36 rads. So we have a couple of options available to us. We can either take the value in degrees, divide it by 360, and then multiply the answer by 2 pi, or we can remember our conversion factor of 2 pi over 360. The way I like to think of this is the unit of angular measure that I'm trying to get goes on the top of the fraction, because that's one revolution in radians, and the thing that I'm trying to get from, in this case degrees, goes on the bottom, because there's 360 degrees in a revolution. Now this same process works when we're going from radians to degrees. So if we take a value of 0 0.26 radians, if we want to get that into degrees, we can first of all divide by the number of radians in a revolution, which is 
which gives us 0.0414 revolutions. And then we can times it by 360 to get our value in degrees. This time, 14.9 degrees. But the same is true as in our previous step. If we take an angle of 0.89 radians, and this time, if we times it by 360, the thing that we're trying to get to is degrees, divided by 2 pi, the thing that we're trying to get from is radians, and that will give us 0.89 radians in degrees. This time, 51.0 degrees. Once again, we can either go from radians to revolutions, and then revolutions to degrees, or we can just use our conversion factor of times 360 over 2 pi. Both methods link to our facts at the top here. One revolution is 360 degrees, and one revolution is also 2 pi radians.